Hello and welcome back. We're going to talk now about clinical reasoning and the gathering data portion. And if you remember our uh, framework here, data gathering is one part. The other part is hypothesis testing. And we can gather data, we said, from several different sources. We're going to talk about here first acquiring data, then interpreting and organizing that data. And so the first part, acquiring data. Uh, really has two components to it, which data to collect as well as how to accurately collect that. And we're going to talk about both of those separately. So the first one, what data do you want to collect? So there's data that you always collect and there's data that you are going to collect specific to which hypothesis you have. So let's look at it in the context of each of the different places we can get data. The initial data will be uh, the vital signs, chief complaints, and maybe things that the paramedics say. Uh, on your history, you're going to get certain things in the history like the OPQRST, which you'll learn about uh, in your history taking class. On your physical exam, you are probably going to always at least look at the patient and see how they appear. Do they look like they're sick? Do they look like they're in distress? Do they look comfortable, etc.? And for testing, I can't imagine that you're always going to order some kind of test. And so, testing, there's nothing that is always going to be done. Now let's look at things that are specific to your hypotheses, right? Again, you can look at different sources. Your initial data, there's, you're t probably not going to have any specific uh, differential with the first data uh, that you get, like their vital signs and chief complaint. But then when you go on your history, you're going to base it on your differential diagnosis when you look at the physical and testing as well. The point here is that you're going to have multiple diagnoses, which are represented by these circles here. And they're going to have some overlapping symptoms and signs. Like let's say you have someone coming in with a headache. Both bleeding and brain, migraines and brain infection may all present with vomiting. And so that's represented here in this Venn diagram. So this thing really doesn't help us differentiate between any of these three diagnoses. But here you have one that's fever that's only present here. And so this key feature is specific to this disease. It's specific. So those are the kind of things that we want to uh, find that are specific to our hypotheses when we're looking for specific questions there. Finally, we want to know how to accurately collect it. And those are the skills that you're going to learn in the various workshops that, that come. Uh, you're going to learn how to take vital signs. You're going to learn how to communicate and elicit history from patients. You're going to learn how to listen to the heart and lungs and palpate their abdomen, examine their knee, etc. And then you're also going to learn how to interpret various tests that you get, like chest x-rays, EKG, blood tests, etc. And so now let's move on to the second part, which is to interpret and organize. And uh, really what you're going to end up with here is a problem representation, and that has two components here, the problem list as well as semantic qualifier. So a problem list is any abnormal finding that you're going to get from these different data sources. So you might have a blood pressure that's high. You may have someone saying something abnormal on the, the history, like, oh, I have chest pain. Most people don't have chest pain, so that's something new. You may find something abnormal in physical or testing as well. Now, when you do find something, abnormally. You want to describe it using uh, these things called semantic qualifiers. and Those are nothing but adjectives. And they're specific adjectives that are paired opposite. So acute versus chronic. Acute means something that recently started and chronic something that's been there a while. Sharp versus dull. Bilateral versus unilateral. Constant versus intermittent. So this helps you uh, differentiate uh, between uh, you know, and better describe a complaint or, or better describe an abnormal finding so that maybe you can find something that isn't overlapping in that Venn diagram I drew, but that's, that's in its own area. And so here's some examples of, uh, of uh, um, some complaints without semantic qualifiers and with semantic qualifiers. You could say chest pain, or you could say something that's more descriptive, acute onset severe crushing chest pain at rest. Or you could say headache, right? Or you could say acute onset severe frontal headache. So you can see how this gives us a little bit more description, so it allows us to uh, use that data when we're making and evaluating our differential diagnoses, that is, our hypotheses. And when you're done, when you, you know, usually at the end when you've collected history, physical, history, physical, and your initial data, you're going to try to synthesize all of that into a summary, a summary statement sometimes called an assessment. And that's going to be uh, a problem list, usually the most uh, important problem with all the semantic qualifiers. And so you can say here like a 27-year-old male with a chronic history of migraines with acute onset throbbing occipital headache associated with intermittent vomiting on exam, unilateral left-sided weakness, and slurred speech. And that is the end of this 
uh, video. And we're going to go through an example in the next one.